Wednesday, March 8th, Market Analysis. This is Stan Ehrlich. Good morning. California time, 9.25 a.m., a little before the middle of the trading day. And I'm going to start out as I usually do on my regular page. On the left is the S&P 500 Spider one-minute chart. You can see it's going back and forth and back and forth ever since the last couple of hours of yesterday. And this morning, a minor new low, a little bit of a rally, and we're going no place fast. In fact, we are dead unchanged to the tick a moment ago. No, exactly where it closed yesterday. So on the right-hand side, as you can see, email me at info at ersignals.com if you've got some questions. I will be more than happy to answer them for you. So unchanged at the moment, um, relatively small trading range, and a little bit at the low of the day today, below yesterday's low. Now, let's look at some details here on this daily chart. You can see that the gap that we left behind from last Thursday's bullish engulfing and a very nice rally the next day and a follow through on Monday of this week. Then it closed poorly on Monday, just barely higher near the low and dropped off to close the gap yesterday. Remember my old little saying here, gaps are like a black hole in space. They tend to suck the price action back into the gap, which it did again yesterday. So the gap is closed. There's no reason, in my opinion, to go down much further. I do not want to get below. I do not want to close below. It is going to begin to change my mind about the direction of the market for a while to come. If we get below, that low of Thursday, the bullish engulfing, and that low is 392.33. No, 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 no. Don't go below there. And certainly, if you do, don't stay there. Act like a ping pong ball being pushed underwater and pop right back up again, which you could do. But I don't even think we're going to go there to begin with. So I'm looking for the beginning of a rally. And certainly, going back to the left side here, huh, not yet. Uh, we're now uh, down 18 ticks, big deal. And uh, we got a little oversold in the last break, which was only 10 minutes ago or so. So I'm not going to be surprised to see it rally back up again a little bit. But we obviously have to get above 399.70, stay above there. And I'd love to see it rally even up above um, the 402 to 40. 404 level and then we've got something going and remember that's not all that far away we're here below 98 at the moment so a few points higher will begin to do the trick easy peasy so that would take under normal circumstances maybe an hour or two so it could happen today on the other hand don't go down now uh let's go look at the other indexes real quick the dia of course is going to be somewhat similar except it's really not we're near the low of the day and we're down on the day about a point and a third not that much but look we're coming very very close to the lows of the last couple of weeks which are the lowest low since early december that's why we don't want to go much lower Last week on Thursday, we got oversold. No surprise, we had a two, two and a half day rally. Exactly what I was wanting. I did not expect it to come down quite this far though. So better turn around and start to rally back up again right away. Uh, or we could have some bearish situation in front of us for a bit. I don't like closing in new low ground for multiple months. And that would be since late October. Uh, what's the date on this particular low? October 3rd, uh, November 3rd, that is. So November, December, January, February, March, that would be four and a half months of new lows. If the Dow Jones starts to get below last Thursday's low, not good. Would be bearish for the Dow. Could pull all the other indexes down maybe. And vice versa, that's always a possibility as well. Let's see what happens. 
the QQQ is doing the best and generally has been <clears throat> for many months now. It rallied the most. It broke the neckline of the giant head and shoulder bottoms from June until the end of December. The pattern exists in all three indexes. Um, it acted the best, most classic, et cetera, et cetera, on the Qs. And they, the Qs, have already rallied about 50% of the minimum upside objective already. And again, that was on um, the rally high on February 2nd, or three weeks, four weeks ago. So again, last Thursday, very, very important. We don't want to get below that low. We don't want to close below that low. It could start some bearish activity immediately if that happens. That's the fail safe. Meantime, trend is up. Since October 13th, gigantic bullish engulfing ER buy signal, I caught the bottom of the bear market of 2022. And so far, the beginning of the bull move, and that's what I believe we're involved in, of 2023. And maybe even last in the next year as well. Wouldn't be surprised. But it's only March. Let's give it some time. Uh, so I am expecting a turnaround and a beginning of a rally ASAP. Period. Can't prove it by what we're looking at because everything's going a little bit higher, a little bit lower, kind of sideways-ish. In fact, right now, we're uh, dropping off a little more than I would like. But we're very oversold, so could turn around any moment. Now, let's look at futures. And I'll start out with corn, which I have for the last couple of weeks because we have a very, very uh, profound long-term situation brewing in corn. And here we go, guys. Um, a week ago, we dropped below the lows of December. That made new lows since August. Very bearish. The market got oversold in the process of doing it. Not particularly unusual. It rallied for a few days, and that was toward the end of last week. So Monday, Tuesday, and today, Wednesday, we've been slipping a little. And you know, if we closed right now, this would be the second lowest close to the move down. It would be back below on a closing basis, the lows that we made in early December, which was at the bottom, a bullish engulfing ER buy signal. That's why I built this strategy to pick turning points to the day. ER1 gets in a trade when it's green and red that same day. ER3 tries to get into the trade within the next few days. Sometimes it misses. Sometimes it grabs better entry prices than ER1. Both of them have a finite, low-risk stop in place immediately and can automatically, of course, move that stop even on the same day of entry to lessen the risk and increase the profit potentials. Back to our current situation. New low for the day just now, the second, 6.30 and a half, um, coming down. We may even make a new low closing price for the trend. And I wouldn't be shocked if it was a low lower than a week ago. And that's perpetuation of the bear move. We are just barely getting down toward oversold on my relative strength index at the bottom on the subgraph. This is a custom RSI. I learned RSI from Wells Wilder himself. And this is my version. I call it ER RSI. And uh, I use different overbought, oversold levels, and I plot different points in price. Next is, whoop, what do we got here? Um, empty chart, one second. Okay, I wanted to go to bonds. Doggone it, a little trouble with this thing this morning. Here we go. Now, as I said before, I think bonds and 10-year notes, this is the bond chart US, are building major long-term bottoms. I'm trying to figure out exactly what formation, if there is one, it doesn't have to be a formation per se, but we're dipped down into major support, got oversold, and now we're popping back out of it. So this is a new high since the oversold condition. I'm trying, well, I can't do anything about it. You always have to move with the market. You never can make it do what you want it to do. Despite, despite how hard you try. <laughs> so a new high, that's good. 
as this chart goes up, rates go down on a very, very short-term basis, hourly, daily, that kind of thing. So this is optimistic. I like what I'm seeing. And it should help, could help, the stock indexes to start to rally. Can't prove it at the moment. Next chart. We got um, waiting for data, waiting for data. Okay, silver. Um, very oversold in silver. I'm looking for the beginning of a rally. We had a buy signal that worked for a few days, and there was a good profit potential. Not great in that buy signal. And then all of a sudden, yesterday, it crashed, and we had been out. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. We made a little bit of money on that signal, not as much as I'd like, and we're waiting for another signal. Meanwhile, don't go short. You're oversold. That's too dangerous. Whenever you see yellow or red price bars, it means that on a break, it's oversold. If it's rallying and you're yellow, you're overbought, and that's a danger looking to take profits on long positions, looking for new short signal concept. Next chart, 10-year notes. How about that, guys? Today, we've got a brand new buy signal in 10-year notes, period. I've said before that these buy and sell signals sometimes cluster. And here we have two buy signals in approximately two, two and a half weeks. I like what I see. This reinforces my expectation that we're about to see a rally of significance in the interest rate futures. You don't want to go below the yellow dot, today's lows. You want to get above today's highs on a closing basis in the next day or two or three by the end of the week, I hope. And that'll, <clears throat> that'll be a new high for the week. And uh, looking low, more and more bullish. This is great. I just noticed this. This just happened a little while ago. <laughs> so a new long buy signal and tenure notes as we speak today. The criteria is you've got to stay higher than yesterday's close. If we end up getting lower than yesterday's closing price, the green disappears and you're back to a nothing signal whatsoever. It'll be a bearish engulfing, but not an official ER sell signal. This is green, therefore an official ER buy signal. I hope it works. We're going to find out. I can't change that. Next chart. We've got uh, OJ coming down. Uh, there was a big freeze that bumped the prices up a heck of a lot. These charts are a little bit out of order. I apologize for that. Crude oil is going sideways. Heating oil is going sideways. But I'll go back to heating oil for a second, because if you start closing below these two green support lines, wow, you've got a major bearish signal intermediate to long term. And we're starting to come down the last couple of days, yesterday and today. And this could happen very quickly. So I wouldn't be surprised to see it maybe by the end of the week or next week drop below one or both of these support lines. The long-term trend seems to be sideways, to say the least, since last April. This is huge. Looking for a gigantic bear move down in heating oil. Uh, another comment, well, we're getting out of winter, you know, starting to get into spring. This weekend, you're going to lose an hour, spring forward. So we'll see. Seasonality-wise, you, you would expect, I don't know if it's actually true or not, the tendency is to go down when there's no demand for heat. But the uh, energy companies know that and plan on it. Next, oversold condition, wheat, don't sell it, look to buy. Next, live cattle. No comment. Next. Eh, we got the bottom of the market. Natural gas, no comment. Eh, we got the bottom of the market on the E-mini. Okay, we're back to the stock market indexes. Just like the other indexes, I'm expecting a rally. We did get a buy signal on Thursday of last week. Officially, we came super close on the S&P 500, but didn't quite turn green, unfortunately. But the E-mini did. Different trading hours, slightly different ranges. It permitted it to get below my oversold levels at the bottom here on this RSI chart, subgraph. So I'm looking for a rally. Next, same kind of comment for gold. It's coming very close to killing the signal, <coughs> but it's not dead yet. Now, the strategy 
automatically raises a stop really quickly and locks in smaller and smaller losses to profits, to greater profits and larger profits. And I know that that's exactly what happened during one, two, three, four days of moving upwards. Yesterday, if you weren't out already with a profitable trade, you would have been stopped out. So we're flat officially, but the buy signal hasn't been violated. So I don't see anything terribly wrong with considering to go long at this level. The risks are very small losses. Don't let it get below the low of the reversal day. That's your fail safe. Next chart. Same comment here for platinum. And it's holding up a little bit better. And today is an up day at the moment. So we may be starting to come back up to challenge this high of the last few days. That'd be great. This buy signal so far is at the bottom of the break, just like this sell signal is at the top of the rally, at the top of the rally, at the top of the rally, close to the bottom of the break, at the top of the rally. Come on. That's why I built this trading system. Next. No comment on sugar. Soybeans, sideways, no comment. Nah, high-grade copper, no comment. Cocoa, got overbought, coming down a bit. Uh, bull trend, though. You might even look for a buy signal in the next few days, a little bit lower. Next, soybean oil, no particular comment, uh, other than, you know, we picked off that green turning point at the lows. My eyes tend to zip across the chart looking for red and green. That's all I really want to see. Did these green and red signals actually pick the top and the bottom for sizable swings? And you will hopefully not be surprised to find the answer is yes. ER trading signals. Next. Um, corn. We started out here, coming down more. This now looks like a new low close. It's been sinking since I started talking about it a few minutes ago, new lows. This could really start to fall apart a little bit here. It could get a lot weaker real fast. Thanks very much. That's it for today. Have a great trading day, profitable trading to you. Stan Ehrlich.